Thank you, Tom, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to the Johnson Wax Program. Our play tonight is called Harvest. It concerns three hopes, three dreams, of three different kinds of harvest. It's our special Thanksgiving program, and our star is one of the American theater's most accomplished actresses, Miss Dorothy Gish. Her most recent appearance on this series was last season in Post Road. In just a moment, we'll begin tonight's story. In the meantime, may we suggest that you soon try some of the many fine products of Johnson's Wax for home and industry. Isn't this an attractive room? There are dozens like it pictured in full color in this exciting new book. It's filled with decorating ideas, 18 color pages on how to make your home more beautiful. This lavish decorating book is offered by the makers of Johnson's Wax. You'll surely want one. It tells all about a new trend in floor fashions, the polished look underfoot. Here's linoleum flooring, colorful and versatile. Rubber tile and cork, bouncy and beautiful. Wood floors, loveliest of all. You can get your book by sending 50 cents to Decorating Book, Box 12, Johnson's Wax, Racine, Wisconsin. Or better still, you can get the book free by sending in this glassine paper tag that you'll find in every can of Johnson's Paste Wax. Yes, the decorating book is free when you send in the glassine tag from a can of Johnson's Paste Wax to Decorating Book, Box 12, Johnson's Wax, Racine, Wisconsin. Send for yours tomorrow. Oh, Autumn has come to a wide stretch of land and to the cities across the great expanse of the United States. Autumn is the time of things ending and of fulfillment. If you're a farmer, autumn is for a time of harvest, of fruition, of reward for the long year's work. That is, autumn should be your time of reward. This is the farm home of one Carl Zelenka, wheat grower on a very modest scale. This is Gramp Zelenka, Carl's father, who came west in a covered wagon train and homesteaded this farm and had many fine dreams here. And now he has only one left. He hopes to live a few more weeks until his birthday, his hundredth. Quite a harvest if he makes it. This is Ellen Zelenka, Carl's wife. You can see there's dreaming going on here, too. The wheat crop is not yet harvested, and that unharvested wheat is very important to Ellen Zelenka. There have been many disappointments in her life in the years since Carl brought her to this house as a young bride. She really doesn't deserve another disappointment now. Nor, for that matter, does Carl, as he stands looking out on the fruits of a whole year's work, ready for harvest. I don't think it means anything, Carl. Kind of funny, though, coming up out of nowhere like that. Oh, nothing's going to happen. Well, I just wish I hadn't missed that weather report this noon. Well, all they said this morning was light, scattered showers. Hey! Well, them's hail clouds coming up, in case you hadn't noticed. Ellen, come here. Oh, Carl. That's what comes to counting your chickens for the hatch. I warned you. Now, Grant, you stop that. 
Nothing's happened and nothing will. You'll find out. Find all them fancy dresses before the grain was even out of the milk stage. All she bought was two dresses, Pa. And a new hat, and a new coat, and a new suitcase. Now, would, what would Joe say if his father and mother came to visit him and Fran in the city with their clothes wrapped up in paper boxes? <laughs> First time you took Ma on a trip, I bet you didn't make her take her clothes in paper boxes. I took her on a trip before she had one foot in the grave. Graham! Uh, it's not because I haven't wanted to, you know that. Uh, maybe. Ain't gonna hail, huh? I can smell a dang blasted stump. Smells white and cold. <laughs> Where is that? Kid, anyway, I told him I was going to start combining right after dinner. You know dang well where he is. Out lally gagging with that city wench. Two of your sons left the farm, and now Paul's going to make it all three. This is one time you're going to be wrong. That boy is staying on this farm, and he's not marrying that girl. <laughs> If you think Carl was a little harsh, remember that there's a lot at stake here. The hope that the third son, the youngest son, will want to stay and someday take over the farm. Well, here's the son, here's Paul, and here's the girl. Oh, Paul, stop it, it's too hot. Oh, Paul, oh, Paul, don't tickle me. Paul, I said, don't tickle me, I don't like it. <laughs> Oh, oh, yes, <laughs> your royal highness, Queen Arlene. Oh, <laughs> Paul. Now, Paul, I don't like you to do things like that or say things like that to me. Okay. It's everything I do annoys you. I guess you'll be glad to get back to that big city pretty soon. Paul. You know I'll miss you. Well, I hope so, honey. I'm going to be there for long anyway. I wonder. I bet you still haven't told your father yet that you're leaving. No, no, I told you. I'm going to tell him as soon as, as soon as the harvest's over. And when is that? Well, we're going to going to start cutting this afternoon. And uh, we ought to have it cleaned up, oh, a couple days. If, if you'd have seen... How hard it hit Dad, you know, when the brothers pulled out. Very bad. Oh, Paul. Your father must know by now that you hate farming. He must know that you, that you want to do something else. Yeah. Well, he thinks farming is probably the most important thing in the world. But it's not for you. Or so you say. What is it, Paul? I don't know. I sure don't like the looks of those clouds. Oh, don't tell me it's going to rain and spoil our afternoon. I think you better scoot for the cabin. It looks like it's coming on pretty fast. Aren't you coming with me? No, I can't. I got to go home. Why? Well, because you just... Well... <sighs> Look, I got to go. That's all. I'll see you. Goodbye. So far, it looks as though Gramp might be right. However, there's another side to this romance. There's another family. Arlene, my father and mother. Their home is in a city 50 miles from here, but their summer cabin stands near the banks of the stream that flows through the Zelenka farm. What is it you're looking for, dear? My book of trout flies. That's the last time, so help me, that Arlene ever used any of my fishing tackle. Well, where do you usually keep them? If she ever touches any of that stuff again, right here in the top drawer. I had over a hundred bucks with her hand-tied trout flies in that book. I, if she's lost Is it, this I... it, dear? <laughs> where was it? Right in that drawer. Where is she, anyway? She's gone for a walk with Paul. Again? <laughs> Louise, she's not getting serious about that boy, I hope. I think at the moment she wants to marry him. What? What was that you said? You heard what I said. Oh, but I'm sure it's just one of those summer romances. Well, I hope so. 
He's a nice looking, good natured kid, but I certainly don't want him for a son in law. Ye God. <laughs> Who's that? I don't know. Oh, dear, I hope it's not going to storm now and ruin my party. I've planned everything for outdoors. It's one last time for the season. Uh, it'll only be a shower. Oh, boy, will he be biting when this is over, huh? <laughs> don't look so glum. Listen, if I don't catch my limit today, you get a new hat. <laughs> Have you ever heard that sound? It's the sound of hailstones gathering and rolling high in the clouds. To a farmer, it's a terrifying thing to hear. It means that thousands of tons of ice are suspended over his feet. Grant, it is hail. I told you, going to be a Jim Daddy. And only the big ones roll and howl like that. What's that? Why, he went out to start cutting the wheat. We can't cut now. It's going to hail any minute. Well, it, it may still miss us. It, it's such a little field. And all he'll harvest out there is a hopper full of hailstones. Big as hen's eggs. That's sure funny. That, my boy, is what's known as the quiet before the storm. I tell you, over almost before it started. Yeah, I'm off. It, do, it doesn't look very bad. Do you think I can still serve outdoors? Well, of course you can. Looks like we missed the worst of the storm. <laughs> Sun will dry off everything in no time at all. Oh, well, bye now. Goodbye, dear. Uh huh. Worms. Just in case the fancy flies don't do the trick. Wonderful what good a little rain will do with that. You know things like this happen, and there's nothing we can do about it. I don't know by this time when you're a farmer, you got to set your hopes for tomorrow. Yes. Even when you know dang well, tomorrow will probably be worse than today. Yes, sir. Oh, Carl, wait. Coffee's on. We'll be finished pressing in just a minute. Coffee's on the table, Paul. Fresh donuts, too. Sugar candy. <laughs> oh, come in. Oh, hi, everyone. Did you ever see such a mess? Yes. Oh, you want to change? You. I could get you a robe. Oh, no, I'm just fine, Mrs. Zelenka. Well, then sit down. Oh, 
sure lucky that shed was handy. Or I might have been drowned. Well, uh, torn to shreds. Quite a storm, man. Eh? Kind of ruined things, didn't it? Oh, I don't mind it, really. The rain's good for the hair, you know. Oh? Mm, that smells good. Thank you. Oh, you folks are sure lucky. Sitting here where it's warm and cozy, while the storms bend its fury from without. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I say something wrong, Paul? No, of course not, dear. Take a look at that. What? I don't see anything. That mud out there was a stand of ripe wheat ten minutes ago. Wheat? It's gone. But it only held for a few minutes. Yeah. Sit down, Arlene. Your coffee will get cold. What does it mean for you, Mr. Zelenka? What does it mean? No crop this year, that's all. That ain't all. Ain't him and Ellen will have to wait another year for their honeymoon. Honeymoon? Oh, Grant. I don't know what else you'd call it. First vacation since you was married. We were just going to visit our oldest boy, Joe, and his family. As if she hadn't thought about that for years. I'll tell you something, young lady. Today don't count. You got to set your hopes for tomorrow. Anybody who ain't got gumption to hack her that way ain't got what it takes to be a farmer. Mom. Oh, Gramps, you always exaggerate. Hmm. When you look on the years that have gone by, it, well, it's been a pretty good life. We think so anyway. What's been so good about it? I wouldn't want to change places. Not with anybody. Well, you got your neck bowed on Paul here taking over the farm. Mom, if he says... Grab, something... grab. It's way past time for your afternoon snooze. He ain't gonna stay put no more than Joe did in her chuck. And what do you think of that? Come on, hey, Arlene. Let's go for a ride. You had more guts here that told you the truth. You've got to set your hopes for tomorrow. Only this is the big hope, isn't it, Carl? If you had words for it, what you would say is that this last son of yours is to prove that you've been right. That your way of life is the good life. You believe it to be. Surely there is such a harvest. No drought can cheat you of. No hail, storm can ruin. Five minutes to two o'clock one lovely afternoon, Carl Zelenka had a fine stand of wheat ready for cutting. At one minute to three, that field had been harvested, every golden grain of it, by a hailstorm, sudden, violent, and thorough. Something like having your whole year's salary in one lump sum in your pocket and then losing it in a holdup on the way home. But there is still help to be had. Carl has business in town. Business with the gentleman on whom virtually all farmers must sooner or later pay a call. Oh, hello, Carl. Want to see me? If you got a minute, yeah. yeah. Come on in. Oh, come on in. Well, Carl, how are things with you these days? Oh. So-so. Mm -hmm. All through with your harvesting, are you? 
Didn't have anything to harvest. Got hailed out yesterday. Took all my wheat. Is that a fact? I thought it fell only north of Plum Creek. Well, it came across the creek long enough to get me anyway. How bad did it hit you? 100% loss. Took it all. Well, you got hail insurance, of course. I remember we discussed that last spring. Yeah, I got some, about enough to pay for the seed. Now, as I recall it, we're carrying you for some feeder cattle. I uh, thirty head, I believe. You don't have to look it up. That's what it is. Thirty head of steer calves. You let me have two thousand on them. Well, look here. If you want to apply for an additional amount, and I presume that's the reason you're here, it's just a matter of routine. Looking into the files. Oh, yes. Uh, say, did you get around to tearing that 10 acres of brush ground or not? Yes, I cleared it. Well, now, Carl, this is a matter of $2,000 outstanding. If you uh, have to close the bank of my account, I don't want you to do it. If it, you're that hard up, why, well, just never mind it. Well, now, Carl, don't take it like that. This is just a matter of business. Now, wait a minute, Carl. Don't go away mad. Sure, that's better, Carl. And you know in your heart that Franklin is just as sorry this happened as you are. Be long now, Grandpa. Well, that won't. You know what? Your hundredth birthday. And you're still the youngest man on the place. Well, oh, never mind that. Uh, Carl back from town yet? No, not yet. Now, well, even if he gets that loan, you still can't make that trip. Well, of course not. That isn't what he's getting the loan for. Hi, folks. That all you two have to do, sit out here chilling on the front porch? Well, what's eating you? You stubbed your toe in a saloon? Oh, Grant. Maybe I should have done it at that. Did you get the loan? Oh, uh, the loan. Of course I got it. Did you think I wouldn't? No. You see? I told you so. <laughs> oh, Paul will be glad to hear about this. Where is he? Uh, where is he always at these days? Well, Graham, can you really blame the boy? In a day or two, Arlene and her family are going back to the city, 50 whole miles away from here. Hey, there, Paul. Haven't worn since you came back from the cleaners. Silly business, having to wear a coat like this. Especially when we're way out here in the country, it's supposed to be roughing it, huh? <laughs> Well, anything to please the ladies, I guess. <laughs> this is the only meal, Paul, I insist on keeping at least semi-civilized. And it doesn't hurt anyone in the least. There you are. Dinner is served, gentlemen. Oh, Herb, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I don't blame you a bit, my boy, not wanting to give it up like that. I'm really anxious to get started myself. <laughs> the dinner, the evening, and that last paragraph in a happy summer was soon over. Arlene's family had returned to the city. Life at the farm went on, unaltered, as did supper, day after autumn day. Paul, aren't you hungry? 
Well, this must be about the last of the beef, isn't it, Ellen? Yes, almost finished. Well, first cool day comes along, we'll have to butcher that barren heifer. She's hog fat right now. I ought to make some first-rate beef. Paul, aren't you feeling well? I feel all right, Ma. Mom, uh, could we at least have some napkins at the table? Napkins? Of course, I, I don't know why it is. I never can remember napkins. Could you be glad you got good, tasty grub in front of you, sonny boy? No! <laughs> don't never feel ashamed to folks that's got hearty appetites that comes from good, hard work. What you're talking about? Oh, I guess you do, all right. I'm not hungry, Mom. Paul, where are you going? Uh, I'm gonna go to a movie or something. Ready for your coffee, Grant? You know I am. Trouble with him is he's got his mind all tangled up with a skirt. It's given him fancy notions. Bring it along anyhow, will you, Ellen? No, no, I'll wait until it's right. You won't like it. There, now. What's the matter? I thought I heard Grant getting up. Oh, you're imagining things. Why would he be getting up at 4.30 in the morning? Well... Oh, the Sam Hill took my overhauls. Carl, did you see them? Grant, your overalls have been packed away for years. Who's that one? What's the matter with you, Paul? You're walking in your sleep? Don't get fresh, kid. I asked you, where's my overhaul? Well, I can probably find them for you, but what do you want them for, Pa? What do I want them for? Do you expect me to go out and milk in my best Sunday pants? Why, you don't need to help, Grant. Carl and I'll milk just the same as always. If I want advice from you, woman, I'll ask. Whoever you are. Say, what's got into you, Pa? Can't you see? That's Ellen. Ellen? Ellen? She seems like I ought to. What's that? You got coffee? Nice hot coffee. Yes. Yes, Grant? Would you, would you mind turning the other way for a minute? Plum forgot to put on my pants this morning. <laughs> it must be, must be getting old. That's a, that's a tomfool thing to be doing. <laughs> Coming down the kitchen. 
get you in your pants on. <laughs> okay, Ellie. Coast is clear. Well, that's the first time his mind has ever wandered. Huh. Well, once it starts, you know, he's doggone near a hundred, Ellen. Oh, Carl, I do hope he gets his wish. I'm sure he will. It's only, what, a couple of weeks off. Yes, I know. Well, finish your coffee. Yeah, we got to get out there. from Chuck or Joe, I suppose. Nope. Think they write to their mother once in a while. Who, uh, Paul? Oh, uh, here, boy. Here. What do you want, Grant? Uh, 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 here, boy. Uh, Paul, you, you take it from me. Uh, I'd let that ladybird fly if I was you. Well, you ain't me, Gramp. Oh. No. Paul, did the mail come? There it is. Ain't nothing worth nothing except in the paper. Gramp, it's much too cold for you to sit out here. Well, oh, mind your business. I, I like fresh air. <coughs> you want to be sick in bed when all the people come to congratulate you on your 100th birthday? Is that it? I ain't never been sick a day in my life, and I'm... Too old to learn how now. Oh, crap. <laughs> Anybody else around here lived as long as I have, you know? <laughs> Cold isn't any better by tomorrow. I'm going to get the doctor out here, no matter what he says. Ma, I'm going to go into the city today. You are? Yeah. No. I thought you weren't going until tonight. Well, I want to look for a job. Oh. Well, I, I, you see, I told Dad I was going to look for a job. And... Oh, I... I see. Well, I guess you'll be seeing Arlene tonight, won't you? Yeah. Then you can do me a favor. What's that? Well, Mr. Ross is crazy about chicken soup. And uh, since we had to kill all these hens, I thought I'd like to send him and Mrs. Ross a couple of soup. Oh, Mom, for Pete's sake, I don't want to come walking in and dragging a bunch of silly chickens. Now you stop that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll Here. take Well, talk to Buck Deer when the does is prancing in the meadow in the moonlight. <laughs> Maybe it's all the same to you, Grant. But would you have kept your eyes closed so tight had you known this would be your last chance to see your grandson, Paul? I'll get it. Just a minute. I didn't expect 
with you until tonight. Come in. I, uh, my mom uh, sent over a couple of boiling hens. Thought your mom might like to have them for chicken soup. Oh. Well, this must be the famous farmer I've been hearing so much uh, about. Uh, Paul, this is Kip. Mrs. Zelenka, Mr. Rowling. Uh, Skipper Rowling at the moment. I was just going to take Arlene down to the yacht club. I'm having my boat taken out for the winter. Uh, why don't you come along with us? Oh, come with us, Paul. It's lots of fun. In fact, they use a tractor to pull out the boats. I think you'll find it very interesting. I think I'll just give these to your mother and I'll think about it. Why, Paul, you've come early. How very nice. Uh, Paul brought you something, Mother. For me? You have a couple of boiling hens. Uh, <laughs> an old weasel, he got into the chickens. And, well, Mother was freezing some chickens and she said, Mr. Ross liked chicken soup, so... How very nice of her to think of us. You must thank her for me, Paul. What was that about a weasel? Did he kill those chickens? Nice. Uh, we butchered those hens, mister. A weasel killed most of our chickens, so we just butchered the rest of them, and... Is that clear now? Oh, yes. It's very clear. I'm <laughs> afraid Kip is dreadfully ignorant about such things. Paul, you must forgive him. Uh, why don't you two run along? Paul and I can have a nice visit till you come back. Come with us, Paul. All right. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye-bye, dear. Paul, I, I'm glad we have this chance for a little talk. Oh, well, thanks, Miss Ross, but I think, I think I'd better get on. Paul, around. we're all very fond of you. I'm sure you must realize that no matter what well, they... You, you don't have to bother, Miss Ross, because, uh, well, I'm pretty busy anyway, and, uh, I'll just say goodbye. Mm. Don't forget to thank your mother for the chicken. Okay. Bye. Goodbye, Paul. City Junction will leave in five minutes. The next bus for Mid-City Junction will leave in five minutes. That's the first one to break in here. Gramp lost his dream about those 100 years even. 
Paul lost his girl on the self-same autumn afternoon. Actually, three dreams came to nothing, because Paul is hereafter lost to the farm. What happens now to Carl Zelenka's faith in a rewarding harvest? Carl, will you call Grant? You know, I, I don't know what's the matter with me. I can't get him out of my mind. Finally got it written, huh? Yes, thank goodness. It was awfully hard to tell them. Maybe they won't care as much as you think. Oh, Carl, Joe loved Grant. So did Chuck. And they'll be worried when they hear that Paul has left. Mm, maybe. And Mr. Joseph Zelenka, once a farm boy, the eldest son of Carl and Ella. Where do we find him now? In the world he chose for himself a thousand miles away. Joe's married, has two fine kids, on the day Ellen's letter arrived, Carl Zelenka's middle son, Chuck, was there. Honey, shouldn't they be in bed? Oh, I know they should, Joe. But they go wild when their Uncle Chuck's in town. Famous always, isn't he? Sitting on top of the world with holes in the shoes and no job again. Well, <laughs> hey, kids! Okay, now, you guys, good night for the tenth and last time, you hear? Good night, Uncle Chuck. Night. Will you be here tomorrow, Uncle Chuck? Well, I'll be back one of these days if you get to sleep in five minutes. All right, we will. Okay. Good night. Happy dreams. Boy, they're a handful. And smart. Oh, it's a darn shame Mom and Dad couldn't make the trip to see you people. They sure would love those kids. They sure were disappointed they couldn't come, but that's farming for you, all right? Work hard all year. Get held out in five minutes. Darn shame for Mom. This would have been the first trip she ever had in her life. If you cared so much about their feelings, my boy, you could have gone home and helped out with the harvest, you know? Well, I might have done just that, my boy, if Dad didn't already have all the help he needed with Paul there. Good night, Jimmy. Chuck. Yeah? Will you come and sit down, please? Oh, sure. Joe, just a minute, honey. For gosh sake, more trouble back home. This letter came this morning. What is it, Fran? Is it Gramp? Yes. Gramp died last week. It happened just a few days before his hundredth birthday. Gee, that's, that's too bad. And that same day before it happened, Paul joined the Navy. For the love of Pete, the crazy kid. Joe, you can imagine how lonely it must be right now on the farm for your mother and dad. She wants us all to come there for Thanksgiving. For Thanksgiving? I, I think she hopes it'll be sort of a family reunion. Uh, yeah, sure, Fran, but, well, gee, but, but Thanksgiving. She says she's written you too, Chuck. Fran, that's the big game, state versus you. You could sell those tickets. Oh, no, Fran, I, I couldn't do that. Not for Doc. Why, that guy moved heaven and earth to get tickets just for me. And, and besides, what about the big party he throws afterwards? I know. It isn't an easy thing to give up. And maybe, maybe I, I can't even get away from the store for that long. I don't know, Fran. I, I really don't know. I, I just don't see how we can do it. And there was another letter from Ellen that had gone out to another part of the vast autumnal land with the same invitation. Only this time it was not up to her boy to say yes or no. That was in someone else's power to say. you'd be over to Jackson. Oh, I was going, but I didn't quite feel up to it after all. Oh, I wish you had. Do you good to see someone else for a while. Uh, some other day. Say, what in the world have you got here? Well, tomorrow's Thanksgiving, isn't it? That's our turkey. 
That for just us two? Why, this thing weighs 20 pounds. Oh, we'll get rid of it by and by. I never could stand a puny bird. Yeah, but we'll be having leftovers on this moose till next spring. Oh, I don't think we will. Say, did I hear that bus stop outside? No, no, you must be imagining things. Ellen, what, what have you been up to? So I got too big a turkey, did I? Say, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> Mother, they're all here, every one. <laughs> ah, Dad, Ma. Hey, Ma. So they did come home, every one. Somehow, anyhow, in spite of miles and money, in spite of football games or business worries, as millions managed to do, the Zelenkas all came home for Thanksgiving. And if they brought joy, they found it, too. I'm not necessarily saying it'd work here just because it came out that way on the experimental plots, but it might be worth a try. Well, we wouldn't be out anything to give it a try, that's for sure. Dad? Hmm? Does, uh, Paul, does he plan to come back here after he gets out of the Navy? Is that a guess, Dad, or did he tell you? He told me. He, uh, claimed he never was any part of a farmer. Not any more than you and Joe, he said. That's funny, too. All three of you. I certainly must have set my sons a mighty bum example. Oh. Ah, Paul told me right out he hated it. Always had hated it, he said. Oh, I don't believe he could have meant that, Dad. Now, I know I certainly never felt that way about it. Well, you pulled out, Chuck, same as the other two. Well, I didn't tell you it was because I couldn't stand it. No, and I've often wondered why you left. Always seemed to feel that you make a good farmer. Well, why didn't you ever tell me, Dad? Mm. I guess there's a lot of things I should have said to all of you. I never was much good at coming out with things I had on my mind. I should have talked more to you. I, I should have told you why I left. I told Ma one day I thought it had something to do with all them books you were always reading. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I was restless. I had such an awful urge to go places and find out about everything. There were so many questions on my mind that, well, it's about to blow up. So I just had to go out and try and find the answers. And did you find them? Well, some of them, I suppose. I think I know a lot more than I did. And I know one thing for sure. I know now that I can find the answers just as well right here at home. You know, there's something about farming. There's something to it, Dad. It gets you. Working with your hands, that must be part of it. Making things grow, fixing things, trying out new ideas. Well, you can never catch up with all there is to know about farming. Yeah, that's for sure. And there's other things, too. Just riding a tractor and looking back and seeing that black dirt roll up in that long, slick ribbon. And watching the cattle graze on the meadow. Does something for you, that's all. I remember once in Chicago, I woke up in this rooming house I was staying in. It was in the fall. And for just a, a short second, I thought I was back here, waking up in my own bed. I came awful close to heading for home that time. I wish you had. Would it, would it be okay with you if, if I stay now? Yeah, sure. That'll be all right. I guess you're a farmer, all right. Say, I'm getting kind of hungry. Don't you suppose that turkey ought to be about done by now? Well, let's go and find out. There now. Everything's ready. Oh, my goodness, why don't you all sit down? Oh, that's the word we're looking for. Lord, we thank thee for this wonderful feast. On this day of thanksgiving, we have much to be grateful for. We thank thee for all the good things that have come our way this past year. We thank thee that we may all be together here today. All our sons, and our son Joe's wife, and our grandchildren. 
And Lord, we thank thee that our son Chuck has come home to stay. And Lord, don't let me ever forget again what Gramp always used to say, you got to set your hopes on tomorrow. Amen.